Welcome to five Photoshop tips for Wacom tablet beginners. So our first tip is getting your preferences right before you're actually jumping into Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how I actually use my Wacom tablet in Photoshop. So on a Mac, we're gonna to go to System Preferences and we're gonna see Wacom tablet. Let's go ahead and click there. On a PC, you're gonna load the software that's included with your Wacom tablet. So my settings, I have set a little bit more towards the firm side when it comes to my tip field. This is just a preference depending on how hard you're actually going to push with your, with your pen. Now, the double click distance, I recommend keeping this all the way down and off, and that's gonna help th keep things a little more simple when you're in Photoshop. Sometimes there's a little bit of a lag when you go to move your pen if the double click distance is set to large. So we're gonna keep that at off. Now, here's the big one. There are two buttons on your pen. There's a forward button and a back button. Now, the forward button I have set to right click. You actually use right click quite a bit in Photoshop. The back button, we're gonna click there, and I'm gonna change this to keystroke. There we go. Now here in my keystroke, let's just go ahead and clear that. I'm gonna hold Option, Command, Z, and basically we're just gonna call this undo. And that's the keyboard shortcut for undo. So whenever I'm working in Photoshop, if I make a mistake, instead of going to edit and then down to undo, I just hit this little back button. There we go. And it makes sure that I go back one step in Photoshop. It makes things super simple when I'm editing. So our next tip is to use the pressure sensitivity of your tablet with the brush tool in Photoshop and get to know those settings. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how that works. All right, now clicking on our brush tool, we're just gonna paint with black to show you how this works. I'm just gonna click and drag this around the image. Now that's not really that different from what you would get with a mouse. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to actually take advantage of the pressure sensitivity that's built into the tablet. Now to get to your brush settings, go to Window and then down here to Brush. All right, and you're gonna see you have a lot of options right here. There are only a couple that you really need to worry about. The first you're gonna click on is Shape Dynamics. Let's see what that does. So we're gonna check that on, and we have a couple of options here. We have something called Size Jitter, Minimum Diameter, Angle Jitter, and Roundness Jitter. Now, for the moment, we're gonna keep everything down to zero, and I'm gonna keep the control, we're gonna put that off. So this is basically back to default again, exactly like it would be with a mouse. Here's the really cool thing that's included with the Wacom tablets. We now have the option to actually use pressure sensitivity. So anywhere where you see a little control box, right now they all say off, I'm gonna change this from normal or off right down to pen pressure. So what this means now, and we'll see a little preview right here, is the softer I press, the smaller my brush stroke is gonna be, and the harder I press, the larger it's gonna be. So if I wanted to do something like sign my name, you can see it's a lot more like you'd actually be writing with a pen. Now you can also change your minimum diameter. Let's say I bring this up. So even if I click soft, the smallest my pen's gonna get is, you know, right about 61%. And the harder I push, you can see my brush gets a little bit larger. So there's a lot of control you can do here. Now let's go ahead and turn this back to off. And I'm gonna show you the next big thing you're gonna wanna get to know when using your brush. All right, so let's check out the transfer dialog. This is gonna control how opaque your brush is gonna be. So if you don't press hard, maybe you don't want it to be that visible. Now, with everything at zero and off, it's, again, gonna be just like using a mouse. But if I take my opacity jitter, and I take the control here, and I turn it on to pen pressure, basically what this does is, if I don't press hard, it's not really gonna put down a lot of ink. But the harder I press, we're gonna see it actually starts to put more ink down, based on how hard I press. Let's go ahead and take that off, and the flow jitter works in the same way. If I don't press hard, we're not gonna be putting down much ink, and the harder I press, we're gonna be putting down more ink. We're gonna show you the differences between flow and opacity in a couple tips. All right, the next thing I wanna show you guys is transfer. Now we're gonna combine this with shape dynamics. So we have our size jitter. We're gonna keep the jitter down to zero, but I wanna turn this pen pressure on, okay? So if I don't press hard, because I've combined them, it's not only not gonna be very visible, but it's gonna be small. And the harder I press, the more visible and larger this brush strokes becomes. So you can see how using pressure sensitivity with your tablet allows you to make huge adjustments just by how hard you press with your tablet. So now it's up to you to kind of combine those different options in Photoshop to get a brush that you actually like using. So what brush do I like using? Well, whenever I'm retouching an image, here's how I have my brush set up. I have my shape dynamics turned on, size jitter is down to zero, pen pressure is on. So this will get larger if I press harder. But I don't like my pen to be so small. I don't generally need that when I'm retouching. So I'm gonna bring my diameter up to about 30%, and that way it never gets pinpoint small. It'll get large if I need to, 
but it never gets pinpoint small, so it keeps things really natural. And here in my transfer, I also have the flow jitter down to zero, but the control to pen pressure. I find this gives me a lot of control whenever I'm editing in Photoshop. For instance, if I wanted to trace around the lips, I could do that. Let's go ahead and undo by hitting the back button from our earlier tip. If I wanted to trace around her lips, I could do that by clicking here and I can just paint right over here. I can make them a little bit larger and you can see I've got a lot of control when I'm actually editing in Photoshop. The next big thing is learning how to change your brush size and hardness and opacity really quickly in Photoshop because you're gonna be using the brush tool more than any other tool in Photoshop, whether it's either painting or using a layer mask, you're gonna wanna get familiar with these keyboard shortcuts. So the first big one is going to be all how you change size and hardness at the same time. So on a Mac, it's gonna be holding Control and Option and clicking and dragging with your tablet. So Control and Option, I'm gonna click and drag to the left and the right, and you're gonna see it's gonna make my brush larger and smaller. Now, on a PC, you're gonna hold Control and Alt and right click and drag. Okay, so holding down Control, Option, and clicking and drag to the left or the right, you're gonna see I can make my brush larger and smaller really quickly and easily. I can also go up and down, and that's gonna make my brush harder or softer. So instead of using a bunch of different keyboard shortcuts or trying to right click and go to change my hardness and my size and then seeing the little preview, what I'm gonna do is basically just hold Control and Option and I can drag to the right and up to make a soft edge brush. I can drag down and to the left and I've got a hard, small brush, really quick. <music> Learning the difference between flow and opacity is huge. For a long time I was just using opacity and when I discovered flow, it totally changed how I worked in Photoshop and gave me a much more natural result whenever I'm using the brush tool. So here's the difference. With opacity and flow both at 100%, this is what we're gonna see. It's completely opaque, we can't see through it. Now let's go ahead and bring our opacity down to 50%. I'm gonna hit the number five on my keyboard, and this is what it looks like when I paint with opacity 50%. Now if I continue to go over the same area over and over again, it's not gonna build up. It's just gonna continue to fill in at 50%. I've gotta lift my pen off the tablet and then start painting again. And then wherever those areas overlap, that's where we're going to see basically a buildup of more than 50%. And if I click lift up and do it again, we're gonna get the same result. We're gonna get a, a buildup. But you can see the transitions really clearly, clearly with all those buildups. So this method I actually don't prefer because flow pretty much eliminates that. So let's go ahead and clear this out. We're gonna hit zero to bring our opacity back up to 100. And now we're gonna hit shift two, and that's gonna bring my flow to 20%. So let's see how flow works. Basically, as I paint along with my brush, you can see we get basically the same thing that would happen with opacity, except if I continue to go over the same area, we can see it completely builds up. Now let's go ahead and go into my brush tool. We'll use, let me turn off the shape dynamics. We learned how to do that earlier. So here we go. It's just a large area. And as I continue to paint over it, you're gonna see right now it looks like opacity. But if I continue to go over an area, it's going to wind up building up. Now let's bring our flow even lower. I'm gonna hit Shift-05 to bring my flow to 5%. And as I paint, you can see it's a very, very slow buildup and I can have a, so much control over what I'm doing and I don't have to lift my cursor off of the tablet. So let's say I wanted to build up an area over here and kind of extend the white background, maybe cover this area up. I can hold Alt or Option, select this color, and then paint right over here and just kind of like build this up and just painting over and over and over again allows me to get a really nice even transition without having to worry about lifting my tablet off of, lifting my pen off of the tablet. So I recommend using Flow, it's a huge time saver and keeps things looking a lot more natural in Photoshop. And our last tip is to use all those brush settings, create a brush that you actually like and then learn to use that with other tools in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna zoom in and I'm actually gonna create new eyebrows. We're gonna, we're gonna create some eyebrow here, here. So we're gonna use our brush tool. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option to sample this color here, a nice dark brown. And now we're gonna hold Control and Option. I'm gonna click and drag down to get my hardness about 50%. And we're gonna go over to the left here to get a brush size that's about the same size as the hair. Now as I paint, you can see the harder I press, the more it's gonna put down and the less I press, 
the less it's going to put down, making these actually look like real hairs. So as I paint in here, what I'm doing is basically simulating what would actually happen with hair. They get smaller towards the end and they get less opaque towards the end as well. So because I've created this brush using the tools that I have available for me with the pressure sensitivity, I'm actually creating something that looks like individual hairs every single time that I paint. So I'm doing this, and again, this took me almost no time. Let's just make this invisible and then back visible again. You can see how realistic that looks. Now, if I wanna do something else, I'm gonna to continue to use my brush tool, B for the brush tool. Let's say I wanna fill this area in with white. I'm obviously not gonna use this brush. Control and option, hold those two down. I'm gonna click and drag to the right and go up, and all of a sudden I've got a large soft edge brush, and I can choose this white right here and just paint it in from the background. Then if I need to get smaller for some details, I can just hold those two down and paint right in here, and we're gonna get a little bit smaller and paint these details in. So you can see it makes working in Photoshop so much quicker. I haven't changed anything with my brush. I didn't right click and mess with any of this stuff. I'm not choosing a new brush. I'm just changing all those brush settings, learning how to use my flow and opacity and hardness and size all together with the pressure sensitivity of the tablet and it allows me to make huge jumps in my productivity in Photoshop. Thanks so much for checking out five Photoshop tips for beginners from Wacom. Look forward to more great tutorials coming soon.